If you've been a fan of the channel for a few years, you know we've done a handful of videos on the Megalodon. We've done a video in the past titled, What if Megalodon Sharks Didn't Go Extinct? We've also done a handful of videos pitting the Megalodon against both real and fictional creatures, such as the Mosasaurus and the OPC monster from Star Wars. So in today's video, I'm going to focus more so on the fact that if the Megalodon existed today, that means it would have found a way to live through some historical events. Of course, we'd also have to talk about how other ecosystems would possibly be affected over the years. Another important factor here is that when speaking about historical beings of any kind, over the years as we continue to research, we're going to learn more, meaning it's quite possible some of the information and stats covered in some of our previous videos regarding the Megalodon may no longer be valid due to the fact that after posting our original video, the community tasked with understanding the Megalodon discovered even more. We'll be asking what if Megalodon existed today? What's going on guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host for this one, Jared Bronstein, and today we're talking about one of the all-time greats, the Megalodon. Let us know your thoughts on this one below, and feel free to stick around for some comment replies. The Megalodon is believed to have been on average 34 feet in length. However, some researchers believe they may have reached anywhere from 60 to 80 feet. They are also believed to have weighed anywhere between 50 and 70 tons, which is equivalent to 100 to 140,000 pounds. Aside from being an absolute monstrosity, the Meg also had 276 jagged teeth, similar to that of a white shark. Now when it comes to the strength of their bites, it's believed the Megalodon had a bite ranging from 108,000 to about 182,000 newtons. Humans have a bite force somewhere around 1,317 newtons. So think about the strength of an average human's bite and multiply that by over 100. There's nothing this thing wouldn't be able to break with its teeth. So to no surprise between its size and sheer power, they were known to eat anything and everything, but mainly ate large mammals. So to no surprise between its size and sheer power, they were known to eat anything and everything under the sun. This includes whales, dolphins, sea lions, sea turtles, and large fish to name a few. They're believed to be a distant relative of the great white shark, but as you can clearly see, the Megalodon would be much, much bigger. It's been widely agreed upon that they went extinct about 3.6 million years ago due to a lack of food supply likely from colder water temperatures. But what if somehow, some way, the Megalodon was able to adapt to these cooler waters? We've only discovered 5% of our oceans, which leads me to believe that there is a possibility that the Megalodon does exist somewhere out there in our world. Although it's extremely unlikely, as experts point out, they wouldn't be able to survive the colder temperature waters, meaning if one did exist, we would have seen it by now. But how do we know they don't exist? Maybe I'm just a dreamer and the thought of an 80 foot shark still roaming the deep ocean is all too exciting to pass up, but considering how there is a good 95% of the ocean unexplored, who's to say for sure? This also raises an interesting point, maybe somehow, some way, the sharks were able to adapt to the cooler waters, which led to them reducing in size as a whole. Over the millions of years, it's quite possible the Megalodon found a way to adapt by living in cooler temperatures, which in turn reduced the shark's physical size and appetite. Now, I'm not saying this is definitely the case. In fact, it's likely not, but still, it's fun to ponder the thought. And if this was deemed to be true, it would lead to a lot of other questions and would certainly lead to a lot of research being conducted. If somehow sharks from millions of years ago were able to completely adapt to change from their natural habitats and physically change in size to accommodate their current living conditions, who knows what other deep sea creatures from millions of years ago still exist. Again, that's not to say they would necessarily be the same size. For the Megs to live in cold waters, they would not only likely reduce in size, but would also rely even more heavily on their sense of smell to capture prey. Given how dark the deep ocean is, marine life needs to either light it up naturally or use their heightened sense of smell or sight to maneuver. In the case of the Megalodon, much like Great Whites, they would rely on their sense of smell to capture prey. Historically, the newborns would tend to swim near the shore, which would obviously not be possible if they managed to become deep sea creatures. Again, if somehow they managed, we'd have to review everything we thought we knew about the Megalodon. However, upon us learning that the Megalodon never went extinct, it doesn't seem the ecosystem would change all that much because it would be the same as before we knew they existed. Nothing would change upon our realization, at least from a nature standpoint. At least at first. Upon this new discovery, as previously mentioned, we'd want to learn more about them, but sometimes nature is better left untouched touched, and there is a possibility our research leads to 60-foot megalodons returning to warmer, more shallow waters. It may sound like a storyline for a Hollywood feature film that barely makes back its budget, but considering how we're already rolling with the idea that megalodons never went extinct in the first place, it seems the possibilities are endless. Now, assuming that over the millions of years we thought they went extinct, they were really adapting to a life in the deep sea, it's not so far-fetched to think they could go back to their natural roots of thriving in the more shallow, warmer temperatures. And upon us discovering them in the deep sea and capturing them for research, their habitats would be disrupted. They would likely be aggressive towards us, and even if they were a quarter of their original size, 
size, still an eight foot deep sea shark is pretty scary. Regardless of if we're talking about newborns, adults, or both, Upon initially capturing, there's no doubt a struggle would ensue. Although they were believed to be independent creatures, if the species were to reduce in size significantly, it's more than likely they would also adapt a herd mentality. This means if we captured a few of the newfound deep sea megalodons, but not all of them, the ones that weren't captured could possibly pursue us or the ship itself. As the megalodons get to more shallow waters, eventually the sharks stop their pursuit, but again, who is to say they don't stay in the more shallow waters and learn to thrive there? As I previously mentioned, if they manage to somehow go from warm to cold, Old, they could easily go back to warm. This is where our problem really starts. If somehow megalodons found their way to more shallow waters again, as we know, they would certainly become a problem for all marine life. Although this time around, they would likely be much smaller. It wouldn't be long, maybe a few decades, before they increase in size significantly once again. With a surplus in food, the megalodon would likely once again become the apex predator of all the waters. But it would be interesting to see how other marine life handles the not so new deep sea shark. Would white sharks feast on smaller megalodons? You bet. This potentially means the megalodons may never reach their potential lengths, once believed to be up to 80 feet. However, with the warming of our waters and the rising temperature of Earth in general, it is quite possible the megalodon eventually does find a way to continue growing in size and eventually becomes a threat to the great white shark. But before that would happen, there would certainly be a shift in marine life in general. Assuming the megalodon's new size first coming from the deep sea would be about 8 feet, it would likely be going after smaller fish or younger megalodons or other sharks. However, this means they would also be prey for anything larger, which includes other sharks and whales as well. There's no way of really knowing for sure what would happen if this was the case, as nature always does seem to find a way. It is quite possible somehow, some way the megalodon does grow in size, and we eventually have 60 or possibly even 80 foot sharks roaming our waters. A very scary thought to think about, but the reality is, even if they did exist, I don't think we'd have to worry about them eating any fishing boats. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Considering their size, the megalodons would likely enjoy staying deep in the ocean. Of course, not the deep sea, but nowhere near where people would be swimming. However, when it comes to marine life, there would certainly be a decline in all kinds of fish and seafood, as the megalodons were simply the kind of beasts that could open their mouth and devour a market full of fish in one sitting. Some of their jaws were believed to be 9 feet tall and 11 feet wide, so if that gives you any indication as to how much surface area an open megalodon's mouth covers, you can see why there would be a drastic decline in all marine life. And as previously mentioned, although extremely unlikely, there are some who believe the megalodon does still exist somewhere out there. Maybe my deep sea theory isn't so crazy after all. Survival is all about adapting, and if somehow, someway the megalodon was able to adapt, well that is one big shark I certainly don't want to cross paths with. It also gets you thinking, what else could possibly be out there? Interesting. And that does it for this one, guys. As always, let us know your thoughts below, and feel free to drop some suggestions or questions you'd like answered. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. What if the short-faced bear didn't go extinct? Christopher Wong said, I think this animal is still living somewhere. Also, the Meg could be living in the ocean. It is quite possible that the short-faced bear maybe is living, like, somewhere in the deep forest, maybe in Russia, or possibly, you know, South America. Really, we don't know. I mean, there's so much of the Earth that we haven't even discovered, you know, to think that things exist or have gone extinct. I mean, yeah, there's science and stuff, but like I said, we've only discovered 5% of the ocean. Half the fish that we think of are no longer around, including the megalodon, which is a shark, obviously. It could still be around, is all I'm saying. We don't know for sure. Hugo Ray said, what if Albert Einstein was alive, boy? Yeah, sure. I, I don't know if we've covered that on the channel before, but we can if you, if you want to see it. The noobs dude said, they would be cool to see. I think it'd be scary. They're like really big bears, like, like six feet on all fours. That's pretty goddamn scary. Anyways, guys, I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. That's it for this one. You've been watching LBQ, and we'll see you guys in the next video.